I'm Adrienne Gilliard here with Sandra Bazan, and we're from the ELC's inclusion team bringing you Behavior Bites tidbits. Our tidbit topic for today is the cycle of effective redirection. We're going to do this in three parts. And the first part that Sandy and I are going to discuss is the emotional piggy bank. And if any of you are familiar with the pyramid model, this is where we're going to start. And I have a quick few slides that I want to share with you all um, to talk about the emotional piggy bank and how we implement it into our classrooms. Give me a brief second. Yeah. Okay, I see it. Okay, you see it now. All right, so this is the pyramid from the pyramid model. And we are starting here today with the nurturing and responsive relationships. So the emotional piggy bank is pretty much a metaphor for those connections and those relationships that we build with our children that are in our classrooms, right, Sandy? Absolutely. And if we look at this model, we, we've we already covered effective workforce. That's us. That's us in the trenches every day in the classrooms, you know, making sure that we are the experts in our audience, making sure that we are the experts at our age groups, all the develop, like all of the things we are that, we are the effective workforce. And then so the next step up is fostering those relationships, right? Because we inevitably know we're not gonna be able to manage challenging be any behavior, honestly. We're not gonna be able to manage effective classroom routines mm -hmm. until we foster and nurture those relationships between myself as the educator, the teacher, and my students, right? right. And so I think it's before we can go anywhere, like you said, it's gonna. This is the the preemptive. This is this is the part that you do before you go in and try to fix a behavior or tackle exactly. the challenging, you know, student or or whatever it is. Right. This is the beginning. This is where we start. So go ahead, Adrian. Absolutely. And so when we think about all of our children that are in our classrooms, they all have emotional needs that exist in emotional piggy banks inside of each of them. We have emotional piggy banks as well. Absolutely. And so these emotional piggy banks get drained when they have to be redirected from any kind of challenging behaviors. Sandy, explain exactly what redirection is for those who may not know what redirection is. So redirection comes in a lot of different ways, shapes and forms, right? Basically, the if you want to just take it at its purest form, it's getting a child to do something other than what they're they're actually doing, right? So right. if um, a child is playing and you want them to clean up, that would be a redirection, right? So you're trying to get them from playing in this activity and you want them to clean up. They're telling you, no, I want to I wanna stay playing. You need to redirect them and get them to transition into into you know um, cleaning up mm -hmm. another type of a redirection might be distraction right you have a child who might be having a tantrum and you want to help them redirect their at attention from what's happening to you know a, an area of the room where you can help them regulate and so that we can talk about what's going on and why, why they're having a tantrum but basically redirection is just that S shifting the focus from one area to the next, right? And we can do it a million different ways. We have a lot of tools in our in our toolbox as teachers, right? So we have all these different kinds of promptings. I can give a verbal redirection and that's just simply telling you what else to do. Uh -huh. I can do a gestural redirection. Like if I have a student who is um, highly distractible, I can literally tap on the table, give a look, a thumbs up, and I just redirected him to, hey, I need your focus here back on the table. You got this. So that's a gestural redirection. I didn't say anything. That would have been a verbal, right? A right. physical redirection. I'm actually taking by the hand or I'm leading or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at doing something physical tactile, right? So that's a physical redirection. We have redirections that can be, like I said earlier, distractions. Oh, you know, a simple a simple like, oh, do you want to do this instead as they're having a complete meltdown and I've offered a highly preferred activity. Now I'm no longer in the middle of my tantrum. I got distracted and redirected right. in a more positive light. So right. anything that takes the attention from what they're currently doing to what you want them to do 
in a multitude of different ways is, is what we consider a redirection. Redirection. And we're going to definitely go into redirection in detail next week because that's the second part of the cycle. Right. So when we... <laughs> and implementation. Thank you, Sandy. And so it's crucial that we proactively invest or make those deposits into our children's emotional piggy banks so that we can keep that strong emotional connection. And there's so many different ways that we can do that. Um, this is just a quick list that's compiled, um, you know, giving our children affection while we're in the classroom, when they make bids for our attention and they're, they have their hands up and they're saying, up, oh, they want to be picked up, they want to be held, they want to hug. That's one way that we are making that commo that emotional connection. And also, let me be, let's just take these one at a time because I think you have a this was phenomenal, right? So affection, the bid for affection is the a bid for connection. It's mm -hmm. the a bid for attention. Do you know mm -hmm. those attention seekers we're always talking about? Okay, that we call connection seekers. Connection seekers. Attention seekers. This right. is it. If if you have a child who's actively asking you gesturally, like you said, raising their hands because they want to, they want affection. Either you're going to give them that attention proactively when they're asking for it the right way, or they will get it negatively. In which case, you are going to have to redirect anyway, right? right. So being conscious of the different temperaments and the different bids that your students offer in the classroom. You will notice that every kid is different. We okay. talked about temperaments. We had a different um, tidbit the a while ago that you and I did on the different types of personalities and the different types of, of, of temperaments that we have in the classroom. We uh -huh. as the educators have got to have our radars up because it, it, the, the bids are not the same. You will they have one not. student who will be so vocal and say, I want a hug. I need it now. You will have another student that will just simply stand in front of you and put their head down. And you're supposed to guess, oh, do you need a hug? You have other students that, though they want that attention and affection, will go and hide. They'll go and hide. They table. pretend that they don't want it. Exactly. Right? So it's all of this. It's At the end of the day, it's taking the time to get to know your students right and understanding hey johnny never hmm something's wrong with johnny johnny always comes up and gives me a hug especially on a monday after he's gone to grandma's mm -hmm. johnny went to grandma's he didn't give me a hug i know that i need to to push in to see to, push, it, to build that right. connection again but but i wouldn't know that unless i i had conversations with johnny every time he came back from grandma's right Right. So that's that first one. That's that one. And then we have approval. Mm. Mm. So let's talk about this one, Sandy. Okay. Approval. These are the <laughs> kids that are forever. Miss Adrian, Miss Adrian, look, they're forever getting up out of their chairs and showing you what they did. They're pulling you into their play. Look what I made. Right. <laughs> right. Or, or they're doing something and you'll notice before they answer you, they'll look at you to see if they're doing it right. Right. They're, again, different types of the kids are going to ask for approval in different ways. In different ways. So you're you're going to see the, the 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 spectrum of children and how they and they need it. They seek it. Don't we all? Like Adrian, don't you feel great when you go to work and and your manager, our manager, tells us job well done? Oh my gosh. Yes. It's it's like you could have. Thank you. I appreciate. And I mean, it makes me want to what? Do more. Do more. Do more of that. Again, we're being proactive. We're being preemptive. This is that first stage of that redirection cycle, which is getting them to want to do what you want them to do because they love and they want your approval. They want they want it. They want it. So let's use that as a tool, right? Now, I'm not going to use it as a to dangle, oh, you know, and never give it. No, I'm going to use it. I'm going to overuse it. I am going to be so explicit on the things that they are doing. I love the way, Adrian, that you are sitting there and your eyes are on me. I can tell your listening ears are on. You know how? Because you're, you're so quiet in your eyes. I mean, being explicit with the approval of the behavior that I'm expecting to see mm -hmm. and showering it generously across the board. Across the board. I am I'm preempt. I am proactively dumping quarters into their emotional piggy banks, so that when I am when I do have to disapprove, because that's part of our jobs, mm -hmm. right? Our jobs is to redirect. 
at times. And, and not everything is going to be something that I can approve. So that when I do go and I say, hey, Adrian, um, no, honey, we don't do that in school or, or that's that's safe. I've already invested in our relationship so that you don't feel defeated and you don't feel like I just don't love you because I told you no once. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's, it's a matter of just depositing all the positives that you can so that when you take out from that redirection, you have a balance. You have a balance and you have a foundation there. You already yeah. have a foundation there. And that leads us next to encouragement. And Sandy, every time I think about encouragement or praise, I think about you because you always say throw a party, right? <laughs> they do. And the children <laughs> love it when you throw them a party. When they but an all out party. <laughs> right. Even when it's something as small as they picked up one block and they put in a basket, but they don't normally clean up. So because they picked up this one basket and put it in a, put, picked up this one block and put it in a basket, you throw that's a party. party because that's huge for that particular child. That's a party. And then, and and on top of it, 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 it encompasses the other ones, right? So I'm going to yeah. throw the party. I'm going to encourage. I'm so proud of you. Give me a high five. Affection. I'm so, I, you yes. did such a great job. Approval. I know you can do more. Do you want to pick up some more? Here, pick up that blue one. I know. I mean, who doesn't want to, to pre perform, right? Uh -huh. Who doesn't want it to, to make the people that you have a relationship with happy you right. it, it, it's part of our nature as human beings to to seek that connection right mm -hmm. and so as teachers we can use that to um create that caring classroom that we talk about so that they're safe in the event that i i do have to redirect them they mm -hmm. know that look security is next security they're, is the next they, one they are safe with me Yes. Because I am not going to be punitive if they need a redirection. Because I've been so positive of mm -hmm. all the other things. They don't necessarily have to remember just all the negatives. Because I I shower them with so much positive. Mm -hmm. Right? And so security is huge. They have to feel it's safe. The they have to know that they are loved even if they make mistakes even when they have a red behavior, right? Even and that's when, the ultimate form of security, even when. Even when I throw my biggest tantrum, Miss Adrian loves me. Mm -hmm. Even when I, 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 I throw the blocks across the room. Even when I, I mean, no matter what, Miss Adrian loves me. Mm -hmm. That's the, that, that right there, if you can get that message across to your students you have honestly won half the war and honestly. it also creates an environment of respect it's a very respectful environment um if i take into account your feelings and then i'm able to communicate mine that we mutually understand like i understand it's i, I listen i get you didn't want to do cleanup do you want five more minutes or do you wanna do you want me to put this away for you for later? Because right better than saying, oh, you will clean up because I said you're gonna clean up. And now we have a kid who's in a tantrum, right? Taking that minute to say, hey, I get it. You've worked so hard. I'd love to see what else you can do with that. You want me to put it up top high and save it for you for after we do what we need to do next? Mm -hmm. I'm showing a respect. They might say, no, it's okay. Or they might say, yeah, can you do that? Either way, they understand that I respect them as human, they're people. They they deserve a choice. They deserve a say. Can you imagine, Adrian, going through your entire day being told every single thing that you have to do and having no say and no control? And on top of it, no sense of my feelings matter. Exactly. I'm respected my wants, my needs, my desires, all of that matters. And Miss Adrian, mm -hmm. she's got my back. Right. Automatically, I'm just by just by offering choices. Would you like this or that? You're you're dumping coins into that emotional, yes, piggy, that emotional bank piggy bank for the time mm -hmm. when a choice is not an option. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I give so many choices that the day I cannot give a choice. 
I, I've already built that in. Do, do you see mm -hmm. how that works? Yes. There's if not going to be that big of a power struggle. There's not going to mm -hmm. be that big of a power struggle because Miss Sandy always gives she me choices. Always gives choices. Uh, I always get choices any other time. Well, I wonder what at that point, you know, and we'll talk about these in the other two segments, but at that point, once implementation comes in and once pushing comes in, I've laid the foundation. Adrian, I always give you choices. Sometimes if I can't give you a choice, these are the reasons why. Oh, mm -hmm. respect, understanding, communication, right? And then at the end of the day, it's the support. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, that's all we want to feel. We want to feel heard. We want to be seen. We want to feel validated. All of that gives us a sense of support. All of it and gives it, us a sense of support. It's wrapped up in a bow. Oh my gosh. And if me as a three-year-old, four-year-old, I know that I can get all of what you just described, all of what we just talked about in my classroom. I have just, as a teacher, just diminished possible maladaptive behaviors because I'm already given attention. I'm already given that positive feedback. I'm already explicitly explaining the reasons why I'm approving, mm -hmm. right, behaviorally. I've I've created a caring classroom where not only they know that I respect them, but they respect me because I'm a person and I talk about my feelings too, right? I respect their choice and their need to make choices and decisions. I give I give a lot of opportunity for them to flex those muscles, and all of that is depositing into this emotional piggy bank that I might need to withdraw from mm -hmm. if I need to redirect. Right. But there's a huge balance. And if we as educators can think of it just like our bank accounts, you know, I'm okay with spending some extra money if I have some savings. I'm okay if I if there's an emergency, if I have an emergency safe fund, right? I can dip mm -hmm. into that. But if I have to worry about you know, oh, that's my food, that's my grocery money, or that's my money that's budgeted for whatever else, and I have nothing else, I tend to become more um, aggressive in, in my, like, more frantic in my behaviors, right? So right. providing this at the front end, taking the time to build those relationships is imperative. There is no correction of behavior. There is, there, there is none until you do that. None. Right. None. At all. Agree. Oh, that's a good resource, by the way. The challenging behavior. The challenging ones. behavior. Mm -hmm. That's where the pyramid came from and the pyramid model and everything. Um, so yeah, so thank you so much for explaining everything, Sandy. The conversation was really good. And as always, if you are still experiencing challenging behaviors with any of the children in your classroom, you can always reach out to our manager, Debbie Kay, on our warm line. Her number is 954-295-0672. And we'd like to encourage you to connect with us on our Behavior Bites Tidbits Zoom that is held every Friday from 1 until 2 p.m. Speak with your director about registering. And if you found this video and other videos of ours helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. See you back here next week. Take care.